Denver Broncos, Mile High View, no commercials, no bullshit. Uh, first thing I want to say uh, to everybody is please take a look at the game film breakdown I did with the Miami Dolphins. Um, it's unique. It's the kind of game film breakdown you're not going to find anywhere else for sure. Uh, but it's really important that you really see what we're about at Mile High View, why we look at the things that we look at, why we say the things that we do, and you know how down the road they become true, uh, a fact, a point of fact. But and it's not just, uh, and we, I was doing some uh, patting of myself on the back, but you know, no commercials, no bullshit. So I have to promote the hell out of this for good reason. So, uh, well, I'm doing it. We're doing a video right now. What um, when we were watching the Miami Denver game, that uh, we noticed that this isn't what we would call a Shermer uh, offense. It doesn't. It breaks the mold of the Shermer offense, and we believe that. Uh, I said something about Munchak. And I believe that Munchak was working with Scandrello. So this isn't, I think people think that Scandrello was a, was a soloist, but I think that Munchak had a hand in, in this Scandrello system, the three tight ends. And when uh, Denver went to their 53-man roster, uh, Pat Shermer did something very uncharacteristic, and that caught my attention back then, was that he kept a stable of tight ends. Totally not uh, a Shermer thing. So, Colby, I'd like you to give me your two cents on the uh, what we're maybe seeing a Shermer uh, Munchek hybrid offensive system, and could this maybe save John Elway uh, and this 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 horrible offensive schemes that you know that we've been seeing in the first ten weeks? So, just to piggyback off your point with the whole of uh, Pat Shermer and uh, Mike Munchek uh, hybrid offense, um, we have been saying for weeks that. Uh, that the pass streamer offense isn't working, okay? Um, you have to, if you're an offensive coordinator, you have to change things up if it's not working. And the thing, and this is why we are so key and so critical of Pat Shermer's because he is a souped-up version of Mike McCoy. He is so stubborn that he will not change his team no matter what the, what, what the, what they, who they are facing on, on a weekly basis and or – you know, vice versa. But talking about the whole Mike Munchak and uh, Pat Shermer uh, hybrid offense, it took them till week 11 to do what I said, which is to pull the guards. Now, coming into the 53-man roster, we should take a step back. They brought in Nick Vanette. So that was an interesting move on everybody's part because you had a similar version like him and uh, Jeff Hireman, and they let him go to save about $4 million in cap space. They brought him in. They drafted Albert O in the fourth round. And so, you take a step back, they have Noah Fan, Nick Vanette, Albert O, Andrew Beck, Troy Fumagalli. Those are five tight ends on your roster, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, time out. Time out just a second. I'm sorry, I know you're on a roll, but that is not a Shermer way to go about things. Nope, you're fine. Go ahead. Go ahead if you no, want No, that was more. my point. Okay, okay. Um. So, uh, that being said, when I go back and watch the tape when uh, Pat Shermer was the head coach in New York or when he was the offense coordinator in Minnesota, uh, Rams, uh, Eagles back in the day, he barely used his tight ends. Now, what I did is if you go back and watch our both of our video on uh, Sunday night, I did, a, I did an interesting thing. I went back and watched uh, some highlight film especially on the offense side of the ball with the Titans when uh, Mike Munchak was the head coach. And what I found interesting is, is he would run a lot of two tight end sets. This wasn't, you know, spread it out, you know, play out, whatever. This was a lot of blocking schematics in a smart way that me and you have been talking about for weeks and weeks, where you have been pounding the table that you have to run smarter, not harder. And what and I've been saying for weeks to pull the guards because it, it helps out the whole entire offense, especially how terrible this offensive line is. It will help it out, trust me. But I think that I think what people are losing focus on, especially what I did, I, I had to, you know, go back and watch the Rich King Gorilla film. I think this was John Elway saying that, hey, you're bringing in, and I think we should talk about this, bringing in a young Rich King Gorilla, you have Mike Munchak, who's been a head coach who's been an offensive line coach for his entire career, who's seen different offenses, by the way, and who has played as a player. I think that 
Mike Munchak is starting to have a lot of say in this offense. And I think that, like you said before we started this video, the clash. And it's I, been I, happening for... Yeah, I think we're seeing my, Mike Munchak's fingerprints. It just... Yes. It, it really dawned on me as we were doing our post game. I kept put, you know, running it back in my head and, and just kind of you know, running the just the formations and things like quickly through my head. And it just all of a sudden like, you know, it just doesn't add up as a, this is not a Shermer system. This is not there are there are parts of that, and you know, pieces of that. But, yeah, there this is not this is a takeoff of something else. Well, we, well, the past will go 11, you know, the past 11 weeks after before the, the Dolphins game. You didn't see any of the stuff that me and you have been talking about. You didn't see those three tight end sets. You didn't see them pulling the guard. You didn't see the offensive line play like they did. Now, are we are are we probably, you know, not saying this defensive line isn't good? I I I mean, I think the Dolphins defensive line is young enough. They're going to continue to improve. This wasn't a bad defense by any means. No. You're going against the Saints, and this is a notch above the Miami Dolphins defense. This this Saints defense has well, players. This, is, this Oregon is this, yeah. this okay, I just I'm going to I'm going to get we'll get into the Saints on another yeah. day. I do, yes. do want to yeah. say one thing. I have pounded the table time and time and time again that you build your organization from the foundation up and absolutely that is what the the New Orleans Saints screams is that they have great ownership. They they have an ownership that doesn't meddle. They have great um GMs that fit the system and good coaching. So the GM and the scouts and the coaching all work like, like like dancing partners, getting players to fit that system. This is a for real team that's coming to Denver, for real organization. And that's what I pound the table as a Denver Bronco fan. I don't, and, and I think too many people have written Pat Bolin off, written him, wrote him off, didn't understand what they had with him. And, and again, I pound the table for the best. Nothing else will do. I don't care about nine and seven, ten and six. It's you got to be the best, and and I think that the New Orleans Saints has that type of an organization. Well, Pat Bold screamed that. He screamed that as an owner. I mean, you never saw a Pat uh, Pat Bolin organization crumble like this. It never but, got to this level when, when he when he first became over, owner. It never looked like this. And what does that say? It means that John Elway has had too much power. The trust can't get their shit together. Okay. The trust can't get their crap together. And we've been pounding the table for weeks. Now, this is how to save Elway. There's, I, I'm going to be honest. With, uh, I don't, I don't, there's nothing to save Elway. He, he's gone way too far. He's gone way too over his head. Having two titles as player personnel. And head coach. Yeah. And head, head coach. coach, so three. Head coach. Three, let's, let's, three. He, he's head coach, you know? He is. Yeah, he's got to get. He's got to stop meddling. I mean, the only way that we can save Elway is to have, you know, Munchak and Shermer somehow work something out where, you know, they come up with a completely hybrid offense. He's got to let those two and Fangio have player personnel decisions, you know, so that when Elway's contract is up, he can ride out. Maybe somebody can come in and we can build off of something. A perfect example, and this is why I, you know, the Saints, okay, I don't want to talk about, the, okay, I actually want to bring something up about the Saints. I love how the Saints have built their team, to be the completely honest here. Um, the, the perfect example of this is when we needed a left tackle a few years ago, and this is when we brought in Vance Joseph and Mike McCoy and that great coaching staff that everybody was praising. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I wanted Ryan Rams check. I thought he was the best tackle in the class. I thought he comes from Wisconsin where they teach offense alignment. I, I think you weren't the only one. I think there were other people that wanted him too. I wasn't the only one, and I probably wasn't the only one, but I wanted Ryan Ramschek because he came from a program in Wisconsin who teaches great offensive line play. Okay, You saw the likes of Travis Frederick. He just retired. Guys like that. And you saw... This is what this is the Elway move. He went full athleticism instead of player, you know, a true product. An NFL, NFL player or an NFL, NFL uh, a football player. He went for he went for the candy instead of the football player. 
exactly. You drafted Garrett Holtz, and uh, it's taken him three, four years to finally play good. Okay, at the expense of the rest of the line. Exactly. That's, and, that's, uh, the, that's the clause I always want to say to all these people that, oh, but look, look at look he's at a Bowler. pro Bowler. At the expense of the rest of the line. Yeah, at the expense of the rest of the offensive line. Do I want Garrett Bowles back? Heck no. I don't want Garrett Bowles back. You, I, I'm sorry. I'm you sorry. Know, I'm not going to be the only one person saying this, but I don't want him on. I don't want him on my team. But the, here's the problem. Elway will figure out a way. Well, he's going to pay because that's his one example that he can point to. That's so he boy. will pay him. But if he didn't pay him, believe it or not, Elway's the kind of GM that would get somebody worse. Believe it or not. Yeah. He I would mean, get somebody worse. I mean, they got rid of Danny Trevathan and brought in Todd Davis. Oh, well, Todd Davis this, Todd Davis that. Oh, he's gone. Oh, my God, you got rid of Todd Davis. <laughs> oh, God. But, but. Going back to the Mike, the Pat Shermer thing, I, I, uh, I, we, uh, you questioned the hire. I mean, uh, seriously, you questioned the hire when he was hired. You said one or two things is going to happen here, okay? And you, you brought up the points, and you can go back and watch the video. I'm not going to repeat it, but you brought up the points, especially in that video. And uh, the, they should have just kept Rich Gangarello and have Mike Munchak and then both work together. Now that you have 11 weeks pass by. And the past few weeks before the Miami game looked like absolute the worst offense I have ever seen. Ever seen, okay? And and I want to ask people this. Do you think it's really hard to, to, to be an offense coordinator in today's NFL? In today's NFL with all the all the the, the rules in your favor, do you think it's really that hard to be an offensive coordinator? I mean, seriously. I have never done it. I don't want to do it. I don't have any aspirations to be an offense coordinator. But in today's NFL, where the corners can't barely touch you when they throw a flag, I mean, it's not hard, especially in the film breakdown that he just did. The best film breakdown I have ever I have seen from all the media outlets. A perfect example of this was the KJ Hamler drag route. Under the first down marker. Now, this is what we're talking about here. That that's the that's the definition of the Pat Shermer offense, ladies and gentlemen. He and we see it. it over and over again. We see that same drag route over and over. And you're you got it's like where where are you when are you gonna actually start learning? Well, well, what are you achieving from doing a drag route that low under the first down marker? You should know as an offensive coordinator when you're sitting up in the box has seen the whole entire field, you should understand where the first down markers are as an offensive coordinator. But they're going to blame Vic Fangio because he's the head coach. But that yeah. being said... Well, it, here, here's the thing. Elway, I want to hold Elway responsible for this. <clears throat> Elway, no matter what you said to Vic Fangio, oh, we'll get an offensive coordinator, don't you worry. What you should have did, what you should have done, was told Vic Fangio this. You're just going to have to deal with this, and go to Munchet and and go to and go to um, Kings. No, uh, go to Scandrell. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, you go to to Munchak and Scandrell. You say you two work this out. You make it work. Scandrell, you need his help, and Munchak, you two need to work this out. Work together, and just tell Vic Fangio, you're going to have to make this work with them. You know, you're going to have to make it work with them, like you said. Yes. That's been the mark of a good GM. Is say I don't care what you're complaining about, Vic Fangio. This is what you got. Oh, I can't get. You know, do you really want me to bring Shermer here? You know, come on. I know. Again, it's it's candy. Exactly. It's candy, but between Shermer and Scandrell, they could have worked work something out. Let's give this another year. Let's at least give this another year. <clears throat> to expand off of that, I want to bring up an organization real quick that has done what you've done. That you just said what they did. You remember when the Rams hired Sean McVay? Yeah. And they brought in Wade Phillips to man that defensive side of the football. That was a smart play by the Rams. Now look at the Rams. Now, they brought in they brought over a guy who it was from the Rich a guy named Brandon Staley who was outside linebackers coach of the team last year. Look how good the Rams are doing right now. They're 7 and 3. They beat a damn good Bucks team and uh 
look what the Rams have done. And I commend what the Rams have done. Okay. They have built their team from the inside out. It's what you do. It's what you do. It's what you do, essentially, but they brought in a young offense coordinator to be the head coach, say, you need to take you need to focus on the offense side. We're gonna bring a veteran defense coordinator who knows eye for defensive talent and will coach the defensive side of the football. And now look how good the Rams are now. Look how good the Saints are. Look how good that's all these other teams that coaches, especially Bill Belichick, who's a defensive mastermind, by the way, who the closest Vic Fangio and Bill Belichick kind of have that same no bullshit. Yeah, and attitude. many comment, many people have commented on that. Yeah, they have the no bullshit attitude. Well, I I told the fan, I said I said to fans that wants to to get rid of Fangio. I said, do you realize that what we'll have we'll have the 2019 Giants because there was no defense bailing out Shermer like this. This defense constantly bur- uh, bails him out in his system. Well, you brought up the whole – I'll talk about it because no, you, nobody – me and you will talk about it. We wanted Jordan freaking Phillips. He is a young up-and-coming defensive tackle. We've been saying it for weeks, and look how good he's doing in Arizona. Look how good Vance Joseph is doing, is, is doing in Arizona. Okay, I'm not going to go off topic, but this is – I mean, to say that we're not Bronco fans here, you guys must be out of your mind because what we've been saying for weeks. I said pull the guard. That's what they did. You said specifically clear up the free runners. It helped it clear up the free runners. They still have free runners, though. You pointed it out in the film breakdown. See, this is what we're talking about. We're not stupid. We're not going to put bullshit on your door, your front step. We're not doing that crap here. We're trying to put up, put out a quality product where you can ins and outs, the ins and outs of a film breakdown review and also the type of players that can fit a system, especially the likes of Jordan Phillips, Corey Littleton, et cetera. Not go out and get trade a seventh-round pick. Why was he up for a seventh-round pick? I don't know, because he's an aging veteran. No good. Hey, this is what I saw breaking down the film that just hit me when I was breaking this all down. Fangio's defense really had a much bigger impact on this game that's even being talked about because – in my in my video that I produced, I showed you all those little things that they still can't seem to get right. They, I showed you good things, but do you realize that if you're playing a team like, for instance, the Saints, a, a really good team, Pittsburgh, these other teams, those little problems you can't have them. You can't have them when you're playing those. You know those those when you have those Shermer problems that when they they come up, you know. Fangio is bailing in this game in Miami. He got those three and outs because this isn't the greatest offense out there. Yes. And uh, that's the only thing that really got this thing going. You can't afford – there were three and outs on the Denver Broncos that was inexcusable. The drag route, for instance. Okay? You can't have that when you're – you cannot do that when you're playing upper echelon team. And to to piggyback off that point, the good teams will take advantage of those weaknesses. Okay? That's why this game on Sunday, we'll talk about it probably later in the week. But whatever, that being said, they will it's a different team. But what did I say when we first came when I first when we first started the video? You can go back and watch what I said. I said this was a Vic Fangio win. Yeah. I said this was a Vic Fangio win because <laughs> because there's still problems on the offensive side of the football. Yes. Yes. That that, that were yes. still glaring. Yes. Said, this something the- that won't be be discussed. You're exactly right. And that popped out on me. And that's why I really suggest people, and when you're editing, you're really, really going into, yes. the, into the film, uh, it really popped out that, you know, this, this defense really still saved this offense, you know, really did. Gave them multiple chances to make up for problems that they still have. Well, also, we could, also we could talk about how much of the short field they had, too, for the defense, because the special teams still stunk up the joint because of the player personnel. And Tom McMahon doesn't know what he's doing. They'll fire him and go after another clown. And, uh, another clown to come in, yeah. Exactly, another clown. But Mark, like, Mormon Bailey, come on. <laughs> yeah, come on, Brock Olivo. Come on, come back, come back. <laughs> like, but this is that we have. We try to put out a quality product out there, and I, I've been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks, pull the guard. And I think that you're right. I think you're onto something, and I, I encourage everybody. Including, including you, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch the, the highlights of when Mike Munchak was the head coach for the Tennessee Titans. You will clearly see 
how he used how he utilized the tight end and how his blocking schemes. And I want to ask you something real quick. Wasn't the blocking scheme different from what you've seen the past the past few weeks? Well, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's what that's what tipped what me does off. That tell you that I yeah. think Mike Munchak had a lot of say in this game. I, I think I do. I do too. And I think he peppered it in in some other games, but they just got away from it. They just walked yeah, because away. Because Pat Shermer's a meddling offense coordinator. My way! My way! My way! And that's where we're at now. I think I'm not going to, I'm not, this is where I'm not giving John that way a pass. I think you had the perfect marriage last year, but, you know, the media spun it that Vic Fangio and Rich Scangarello didn't get along. I think that was total bullcrap. I, I think that was yeah. a total, that was a PR move. And uh, I think that was just a lie. I think they lied to you, Broncos country. And uh, I think that if you continue to have Rich Gangrel and Mike Munchak here this year, I think this offense would be a lot better than it has looked. I think this offense would be utilizing those tight ends for weeks and weeks and weeks. They'd be able to run the ball smarter, not harder. The likes of Melvin Gordon, who you guys proclaim is the best running back on this roster, who fumbled again. <laughs> um, it just blows my mind that people still believe that Melvin Gordon is the best running back, but I'm not going to get yeah, it into took that. Till week 11 for him to even block correctly. Well, it took him till week 11 to uh, you know know how to run through a freaking open lane correctly. That's so, where I have a problem with this. You're paying this guy top 10 money, and he learned, it took him 11 weeks to learn how to block, number one. Number two, he runs in the back of uh, uh, offensive linemen's uh, backs. And then number three, it took him 11 weeks to learn how to run through an open lane where Phil Lindsay masters that by his vision and his steady running, his steady running ability, which I've been saying for weeks that he is a poor man's version of Terrell Davis. Go back and watch the film when Terrell Davis was running the football he sets up his blockers. That's yeah. what Phil Lindsay does. And they will get rid of him, and then we're going to be stuck with Melvin Gordon. Oh, yeah, yeah, because, oh, well, he's just, you know, he's he's very limited. He well, I can guarantee you there's other teams that are going to be like, yeah, we'll take him. You come yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, Pittsburgh takes him. And he won a thousand yard. They gave him, they, they wanted him. The Ravens wanted him. The Ravens him. did. I wouldn't be shocked either. Yeah. But but this is what we're saying. I, I think that you're onto something with the whole Mike Munchak. I I I uh, I just I encourage everybody to go watch that tape when Mike Munchak was a head coach because there's a lot of similarities. There might be might might not be a lot of similarities of how he was using his tight ends, but there's a lot of similarities on how the blocking schematics, especially, were utilized like you saw in Miami. And I think that he had a huge impact on what you saw from this offense. And then they'll revert. This is what will happen. They'll revert back to their old ways on Sunday against the Saints because the Saints are gonna. The Saints are not going to let those mistakes from the Broncos offense that you still saw on on Sunday. Yes, it's gonna be different. Yeah, because they'll their offense will hang on to the ball. <clears throat> they won't go three and out, and it's gonna be long drives, and it's going to be. Uh, a long time before the offense gets a ha uh, hold on that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It'll be a long time before the offense is back on the field. And another thing, what did I say about Drew Locke too? I said that his, his biggest strength is his confidence factor. And also he could throw in the middle of the field and attack the middle field. And what you brought up, and I thank you for bringing it up because sports talk radio won't bring it up. No. Is no. how he can attack the middle of the field. Okay. The, the other quarterbacks that we had in the past, after Peyton Manning couldn't do that, okay? They weren't able to throw well, it confidently. Well, it takes ten other guys to do that. You can, you know you can't you can't let free runners come in. You can't have sloppy, crappy blocking blocking schemes. You got to put the uh, the pocket around him so he's not dropping back so far. That that what I showed was was textbook, and that's the way that what we could have. You know, I grant it. You're not going to have perfect every time, but. No. You, you should strive for that. The Patriots had perfect blocking damn near almost every time. Go watch the Tom Brady career highlights in New England. Yeah, that's there's no free runners. Yeah, no free runners. Pockets, always pockets, walling off. They, I mean, they were just, you know, that's what you need to have. 
but 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 now look how Tom Brady's doing in uh, Tampa. Or not. Okay, doing. so the, the game on Monday yesterday was a perfect example. Tom Brady wouldn't be as badly kicked in the ass, as I would say, sorry, badly bruised as he was in New England because Bill Belichick, you could say whatever you want about the record, Bill Belichick's still a smart dude and he's going to turn it around. I have, I have full confidence. Well, they're, they're, the problem is they're, they're off of, uh, offensive line. They're down to fifth stringers there. Exactly, but they have Cam Newton who barely throw twenty yards. So, and I don't, I don't believe in Cam Newton. Yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. So, what? And, and also another thing, you remember people go back and watch the play where he threw it to Noah Fant. He lobbed it over the. You remember you put it on the you put it on the film breakdown. You said you said this last week and the week before that he needs to set his feet, lob it up there, and he did it. He, yeah. he did it. That was a textbook play, especially on a play action play. You roll out, throw, set your feet real quick, throw it, lob it up. And he did it. So yeah. I think that Drew Locke has. This is what I love about Drew Locke, and I said this is this is good. This game especially is going to show us a lot about Drew Locke. Is he's going to crumble under the pressure, and he's going to revert back to the four interception game, or is he going to bounce back? And I'm saying that Drew Locke had a great game, no, but he showed the ability that he could bounce back from a terrible performance. And especially from that first interception. Yeah, you need that. You need that quality in your in your offensive leader. You absolutely need that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I the did. lazy route running again. How many times? How many weeks have we been saying that from Tim Patrick, Sports Talk Radio, the other online? Oh, well, they don't want to talk, talk about, about it. No, how no. dare you talk about that? That's why. And, and Trent Green talked about. It. That's why I had to put it on because we've been talking about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, again, people can go and listen to their garbage if they, if they want garbage and they, you know, want to believe fairy tales and everything else that, you know, free, run, free runners are, are just the, the end thing and, and play design. So, you know, whatever. But I think well, that it, our audience, we're getting quality more so than maybe quantity. We're getting quality. Well, well because we're detailed oriented, we are detailed, especially you, you're detail oriented. When it comes to breaking down film, you have to be detail oriented. You have to be, or you're not going to get the ins and outs from a schematic blocking standpoint that you will see from the film breakdown. You won't see that. Well, a lot of what you get are just highlight. They're just giving you the highlight reel, and it, this I'm trying to go way beyond the highlight reel, you know, so that we can, we can go and segue into these next weeks. You know, like you talking about pulling and everybody's like, oh, well, that's new. Uh, you know, it's like, no, it's not. They've done it before, but they got away from it, you know. So anyway, is that about all we got for a wrap up? I think all that right. is. I think, it's, I think it was great. Yeah, Take care, yeah. Colby, and we'll get back together. We'll talk about uh, the Saints. All right, we'll do. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.